What's cracking YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Big Dog's Gotta Eat Fantasy Football as always. It's your boy Nick. So this is gonna be a quick four part series leading up to the drop of my fantasy football draft guide which will be coming out probably a week from today. So it's the 7th I'm recording this. I plan on releasing it probably the 14th, possibly the 15th of August. And again, if you haven't heard me talk about it, my complete draft guide for this season, it'll be like an e-download, an e-magazine kind of book that you could download from my website. It'll have the top 250 rankings. It'll have top sleepers, top busts, top rookies, along with a bunch of other cool shit, random shit that you probably wouldn't find in any other fantasy football draft guide. Combination of basically everything I've been doing this summer leading up to the season. All free information you could have found already on my channel, but I want to put it into a one-stop shop kind of thing. It'll probably be priced at like $4.99, nothing crazy. Skip your Starbucks coffee the next day, grab my damn draft guide and win your league. But leading up to it, I want to do a positional rankings video for quarterbacks, wide receivers, running backs, tight ends. Only the first few rankings of each position because you'll be able to get the rest of the positional rankings within my draft guide. Today we'll be kicking it off with the quarterbacks for my top 10 rankings for the quarterback position. Okay, you can see my rankings on the screen. A few notes before we dive into it. One, if you're interested in purchasing the draft guide, I'm gonna be making a separate video on exactly how you do that leading up to when it's dropping. Two, these rankings are based on like Yahoo standard scoring. So we're talking about four points per passing touchdown, 25 yards is one point. So really standard scoring, you can adjust as you see fit in terms of how your league scoring is. On the right side, you see versus ECR and versus ADP. So ECR is expert consensus rankings. These rankings I did, I have a login for the Fantasy Pros expert platform. So I can do my rankings on there and then it compares them to the other experts that are on Fantasy Pros, which include like all the guys that you would know from Yahoo, ESPN, Roto World, all that kind of stuff. So plus one means I have a guy like Tom Brady, plus one, I have him one spot higher than the consensus rankings. Same thing with the ADP. I just wanted to let you guys know that before we dive in. My number one quarterback this year in fantasy is Tom Brady. Last year he just played in 12 games, quarterback four in points per game behind Matt Ryan, Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees, all of which had monster seasons. Brady enters the year, he's not worrying about deflate gate. Obviously they add Brandon Cooks to their, to their lineup. Last year Gronk played in only eight games. If you subtract the first game in which he was complete decoy and the last game in which he got injured, really only had him for six games. So going into 2017, his weapons group is tremendously upgraded from where it was in 2016, where he still produced like an animal. You look at their offensive line, that was a question mark entering 2016, but they really came together, they improved, and they're going to be a top 10 unit in 2017. Therefore, Tom Brady is easily my number one quarterback off the board this year. Well, I'm not going to say easily because number two is Aaron Rodgers. I don't need to say anything here. Proven his point year over year, consistency, elite level of play. Not going to be mad if you take Aaron Rodgers over Brady, which is what the fantasy community is doing, according to ADP. Number three might come as a little bit of a surprise. I got Russell Wilson here. I'm looking for a pretty big bounce back here from, from Wilson. When you look at the weapons he's going to have around him, he's getting Tyler Lockett back, who missed almost all of last season. Paul Richardson. There's been some noise about him moving up to the number two role, overtaking Jermaine Curse or in the number three role, which is going to be huge for, for Wilson because Paul Richardson's a really, really, really good young talent. He's been plagued with injuries, but I think he's a huge upside play for Wilson. He'll have a fully healthy Jimmy Graham. Last year, Jimmy Graham was barely able to practice with the team, so it was hard to build chemistry, and we still saw him have a, a really good year. So now he's got a really good group of weapons, and that group, adding a guy like Tyler Lockett back, an explosive guy like Paul Richardson into the group, bodes really well for Wilson because last year he was fourth in the NFL in terms of deep ball attempts. He had 83 of them, so 20 yards or more down the field. He had the seventh highest completion percentage among quarterbacks on those deep throws, completing 42.4% of them. So you get guys like Tyler Lockett, you got a Doug Baldwin already, a really good possession receiver, and then Paul Richardson, explosive. Jimmy Graham to spread the field in the middle. Those deep attempts are going to be just as efficient, if not more so, in 2017. And you look back at last year, the reason he finished so low is because of that ankle injury he was dealing with for a really, really big portion of the year. The three years prior, he had at least 535 rushing yards. Last year, that ankle injury limited him to just 259 yards on the ground. And he had a full two yards per carry less than he had in any of the previous three seasons. We saw how much 
of a toll this took on him, along with him not really being able to scramble in the pocket, which is such a big part of Russell Wilson's game, you know, escaping defenders, not even for his rushing upside, for his passing upside as well. I mean, look at the opportunity. This is going to be Wilson's sixth year in the NFL, and every single season, starting from his rookie year all the way up to last year, I'm talking about literally increasing. They've increased his pass attempts, his completions, and his passing yards every single year. So I'm going to look for that trend to continue into 2017. Look for a huge bounce back from Russell Wilson. My number four quarterback, we got Drew Brees. Of course, they lost Brandon Cooks, which is going to hurt. They added Adrian Peterson. I think there's going to be more of an emphasis on the run game. They did add Teddy Ginn to the mix. He'll have a nice deep threat to kind of ease the loss of Brandon Cooks. But, you know, Drew Brees was doing it way before Brandon Cooks came onto the scene. Seven straight years of 4,600 passing yards or more and 32 plus touchdowns. So just ridiculous consistency throughout his career as an elite fantasy quarterback. Then you look at their defense. They're a shitty defense. They're in a division that has really explosive offenses, right? Atlanta, highest scoring team in the NFL. The Bucks, who are up and coming, right? They added Deshaun Jackson, OJ Howard. They already have Mike Evans. Then the Panther, Caffrey, they have Cam Newton. It, it should be a lot of shootouts, very high scoring in that division. So maybe besides Aaron Rodgers, the best combo of floor and ceiling as a fantasy quarterback. I have Matt Ryan as my fifth QB off the board. Now the big concern in Atlanta is obviously the loss of Kyle Shanahan. Last year, Matt Ryan blew the top off the offense there. Led him to the Super Bowl, of course. So I'll talk about it. Atlanta led the league in points per game. It was like 34 points per game. And with Kyle Shanahan on, people are concerned that their offense won't run as smoothly. Well, they, they got Steve Sarkeesian coming in as offensive coordinator. He's come out and already said that he's not really going to tweak too much in this offense. They're going to play as if they were playing last year, which is good. If it ain't broke, why would you fix it? He still has all the exact same pieces around him. He has that elite talent and Julio, Austin Hooper, an up-and-coming tight end. Could only mean better things for the red zone. I barely see a drop-off in production coming into this year. Maybe a, a slight drop-off, but he was already quarterback two in terms of points per game. So that's okay at quarterback five. Matt Ryan really just has one of the safest floors in fantasy football behind a really, really, really good good and improving offensive line. Andrew Luck, quarterback six. He's been moving down my draft board even prior to all this injury news, but he's not fully recovered from offseason shoulder surgery that he had on his throwing arm. Now we saw glimpses of you know his greatness and all the hype that we got from him coming out of college in 2014 when he threw for over 4,700 yards, 40 touchdowns, but he really has not been an elite fantasy quarterback since then. He's averaged like a little over 278 passing yards a game in his last 22 games, which was all of last year and all of 2015. So it, it is really good numbers in terms of yardage, but it's definitely not elite. And in that time frame, his completion percentage is 60.6%. Not good at all for an NFL quarterback. Now he has the tools to be elite. He has good weapons around him, but he's still got a really, really bad offensive line, which in turn is going to get him hit a lot, right? So he's the injury concern, call the injuries fluky, call him what you want. He's still going to get pounded to the ground, and there is a decent chance that, that he gets dinged up throughout the year. So it's definitely a concern. His number two wideout, Dante Moncrief, just got banged up. He sprained his AC joint in his shoulder. So who knows what his deal is going to be. And then we have no clear wide receiver three in the offense. They have, they brought in Kamar Aiken. Phil Dorsett was a huge bust last year. They have this kid, Chester Rogers, who's supposedly emerging as the wide receiver three, but he's also unproven. So it's a question mark there. I, I just think overall, Luck's floor and ceiling as a fantasy quarterback are much lower on both ends than a lot of people think. Numero seven, Kirky boy. My man's Captain Kirk. Last year, he was the third leading passer in the NFL. He had over five thousand yards this year he's got an incredible group of weapons right they bring in terrell Pryor. they have an emerging stud slot receiver in jamison crowder now the big concern here is the health to josh doxson and jordan reed both have very high ceilings as players jordan reed you've already seen the kind of production he can put up but both are already dealing with injuries in training camp doxson to the hamstring jordan reed to the toe they still have a month to recover for the regular season so hopefully that comes along well and if so he'll have one of the best receiving groups in the NFL. Washington has a really good underrated offensive line. They're ranked number 11 in pro football focuses list. They're returning all five starters this year on that line. Continuity should, should bump them up this year and they should be even better by year's end. They still have a weak running game, right? All they have is Rob Kelly. They added some AJ P. Ryan. Again, they're going to very likely rely on heavy volume and passing. So I really like Kirk Cousins again this year. Right behind Cousins, quarterback eight, Marcus Mariota. In my opinion, he's leading arguably one of, if not the best offenses in the NFL, or at least one of that has the 
the most upside. You look at every piece of their offense. They have a top three offensive line and elite offensive line. They added Corey Davis with the fifth overall pick. They already have Rashard Matthews, who was really underrated last year and had a big breakout campaign. They bring in Eric Decker, who's an excellent pass catcher, especially in the red zone. And they already have Delaney Walker, a tight end, who's been a consistent top eight fantasy tight end for the last three years consecutively. And one of the best running back duos, DeMarco Murray, Derrick Henry. There's no weak spots on that offense, basically. In his two years in the NFL, Mariota has an unblemished 33 to 0 touchdown to interception ratio in the red zone, which is a perfect fit for bringing in Eric Decker, who's been an elite red zone target. He scored the second most red zone touchdowns over the last five years of any receivers in the NFL. And that's including last year where he only played in two or three games. They got rid of Anthony Fasano, who was a premier blocking tight end in the league, and they ran a lot of two tight end sets. This year, that's definitely going to change, and they're going to be running a ton of three wide receiver sets given the weapons they have on offense. So the passing volume, while it's still a concern for sure because they didn't throw the ball a lot, it's definitely looking like it's going to be increasing. We saw Mike Malarkey, who's in Tennessee now. He was back in Atlanta with Matt Ryan, and his third year in the league with Matt Ryan we saw a big jump. So it was a very similar situation. They were averaging 29 and a half passing attempts per game right around where Tennessee is now. And in that third year, and this is going to be a third year for Mariota as well, they jumped up from 29 and a half to 35.7. So they have a great offense, great weapons, very likely going to see a lot more passing volume in Tennessee, very efficient. And the best part about it is his floor as a rusher. He dropped a few pounds this offseason to be more mobile and be able to get around the edge a little more, which is good for his rushing upside. He's already top five in terms of like rushing yards per game in the quarterback position. So he's got a really good floor there as well as a high ceiling now. So that combination, you know, puts him in the top eight for me. Quarterback nine, Cam Newton. You know, we've seen the upside for Newton as well as we've seen the floor. If I had to guess, his numbers are going to settle in somewhere between his, you know, MVP season of 2015 and his bust kind of year last year. But you really can't forget that he has had so many elite years, right? In four of the first five years he came into the NFL, he was a top four fantasy quarterback. So more times than not, he's finished as a top four option in fantasy. Unfortunately, it's been two out of the last three years that he's not done it. But again, we've seen his we've seen his ceiling. You know, it was quarterback one in 2015. They add Christian McCaffrey. They add Curtis Samuel, who is unlikely to make a big impact given that he hasn't even, he's barely practiced yet. But McCaffrey is going to be a big upgrade for Cam. He'll probably take a lot less hits because he's going to be able to kind of get the ball out very quickly. They still do lack the outside weapons for him to be a truly elite passer. They just have Calvin, Calvin Benjamin and Devin Funches really, who have not been great over the last couple of years. But Nonetheless, we've seen the upside in a quarterback nine. You could definitely do worse. Rounding out the top 10, we got my boy Derek Carr. You could easily put Carr up to where I have Kirk Cousins at quarterback seven here. He was quarterback nine in points per game last year before breaking his leg in week 16. And that was despite breaking his finger on his throwing hand in week 12. We saw his completion percentage dip from 65 to 55. So it's very likely in those four games with a broken pinky or broken finger, his numbers would have been a decent amount better. Carr's just in a great position. Great offensive line paired with two of the top tandems at wide receiver in Cooper and Crabtree. And they bring in Jared Cook, a good pass catcher over the middle. That's something that, that Derek Carr and the Raiders have kind of lacked. They haven't really had a tight end to open things up in the middle of the field. Jared Cook really finished last season off strongly. Now he's coming in, he's gonna play that pass catching position for the Raiders. As long as he can stay healthy, a really good floor with a pretty good ceiling. So that's gonna round out my top 10 quarterbacks. As you can see, the tiers are listed there. That's something that's gonna be in the draft guide. I'll have the top 250 rankings just listed by themselves. In each positional rankings, we'll have, I think, 30 quarterbacks, about 60 or 70 running backs, 70 to 80 wide receivers, and then like 30 for tight ends, defense kickers, that kind of thing. Each position will be broken down by tiers like you see in this video. If you liked the video and found it informational, please scroll down a little bit, give it that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, and again, if you're interested in purchasing the draft guide, I will make a separate video regarding the guide, how you go about doing that. So stay tuned for that if you're interested. And thank you for joining me as always. I appreciate the shit out of y'all. Peace.